All right, guys, so today with my uh, ball tires, I'm gonna be uh, installing new brakes and uh, here they are right now, real quick, uh, being painted. But yeah, so, um, I'm gonna simply put those on right now. And this has been a huge, huge, huge uh, project. Uh, big brakes, they're uh, TLS Type S brakes. I'm gonna put them on here. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be pretty dang dope. Let me um, show you how they turned out. So these are the brakes right here. Came out pretty dang nice. So yeah, these are uh, four piston, two right there, two right there. And yeah, I didn't get the rears cause you're not gonna see that anyways. But as long as the front end and that color should look kind of dope. So yeah, don't mind all the junk here. It's just cranberry juice and clothing and my hats and stuff. But these bolts are the biggest part of the um project these are an absolute pain in the nuts to find i've never um used this spec this is a specialty bolt if you go to fastener shops they'll probably laugh at you um and they'll probably have to special order it but um cashiers just said hell no we've never even um dealt with that Go to Lowe's, go to uh, hardware shops, go to anywhere, you will not find this bolt. This is a M14 by a 1.5. And uh, this is, a, I think, an 18 or 19 millimeter head. But the uh, M14s are just uh, crazy hard. And these fit those uh, calipers right there. So I have the whole pack right here. Uh, I think there's like one extra that I have. And uh, that was the worst part of the whole um of the whole project of trying to find so yeah all right let me sit back down i'm gonna take off this wheel I'm gonna take off the um caliper and then i'm gonna put on the rotor then i'm going to no well before that i gotta drill out the hubs to um a half half inch or i think it's a 916 to fit those bolts through here because these have uh smaller bolts and in order to pass through the hub, you gotta drill it out. So if you don't wanna uh, modify your car permanently, don't do this, but um, big brakes is cool. If I don't like that color, I could always just shoot them black real quick, little ghetto style, and you'll, need, and you'll never even um, know that they were that color. But I wanna try it, wanna see how it goes, so yeah. Oh, and by the way, guys, um, if you follow me on IG, you know that I have a massive leak you could see the oil right there. Well, the oil actually shot that way, but um, there's a huge leak on this side of the engine. Um, it's either the tensioner plate um, or the VTC uh, sensor, or it could be um, possibly the oil pressure switch or something like that, but I have a massive leak. So after this project, um, look out for some videos on me taking out this splash shield right here I'm just gonna um, probably disconnect it right there and fold it down because I have it nicely put up with uh, proper clips and some proper OEM zip ties. And, um, but it's just nice the way I have it right now, so I don't wanna take it off. So I'm just gonna get this and um, pull this down. And I'm gonna reseal this side of the engine real nice and uh, clean it, pressure wash it. I'm gonna um, turn the wheels to this side and I'm gonna stick a pressure washer uh, wand up there and blast all this out as uh, good as possible and yeah so kind of sucks though because i wanted to do other things um but i can't have um this there collecting all my oil and um it's just literally pissing out i mean um you know don't mind my language but it's pretty gross and it's a sucky situation how it's just dripping to the point where there's a puddle and all of a sudden too I didn't have, uh, I don't have the proper socket in a half inch drive. So this is a little baby three eighths. And 
in order to get in here you have to use a thin wall socket which kind of sucks and um i use that as a cheater bar the floor jack handle and man this little thing took a pretty beating and that's a pittsburgh from harbor freight but it's still pretty good so just gonna roll with it but use a half inch drive if it's in there perfectly if you have to or just the proper breaker bar which i do have a breaker bar right here but um i don't have that socket in a half inch drive all right guys so i got the little bit driver the, the biggest bit actually that i have actually on there but it broke free all right guys so this is the nut i mean the bolt that has to go in there can't go in there because that's the original fastener and you could tell the size it's crazy such a a big bolt so that goes in there this doesn't go in there but now that halfway goes in there because I already notched it out some and that's with the Christmas tree bit. Get these, they're like, I don't know, you can get an, an assortment, let's see. I bought this one, that one, and a smaller one for uh, six bucks on eBay and go right in there. And what's cool is that this is an M14 and it goes to a 14 right there so now that's kind of halfway in there i still have to um do it the rest of the way but you could tell right there i haven't even started And then I do the same thing from the back and this bolt slides right in. So yeah, I just gotta get my um, rat tail file and file that out. Let me go get the file real quick. So this is a rat tail file, just go in there. And remember, you always wanna go one way with the file because if you go back and forward, that back motion actually rounds out the file and that's not what you want you want to go one way to cut and then to leave the chips off then you release then go cut 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 don't drag cut drag cut drag cut Still not yet, gotta work at it, but yeah, you guys get the gist of it. All right guys, so about three, four minutes of, um, with the file, got them where they went in. They were going in, but I'd have to screw them in, but this is just supposed to be a smooth surface, and uh, I kind of wanted to make sure I get it just right, because I didn't want to make them where they were just like, kind of oval or whatever and they actually sit flat like that so just want to make sure of that and then also a good thing to do is to get a brush and make sure all of your surfaces are clean and yeah so 
I'm gonna have to um, bend these out of the way or take them completely out, but I do kind of like that little ducting that they have right here, right there, and right here and right there. That's kind of cool. So um, I'm just gonna end up probably bending them this way and see if I can get away with that. And if it causes issues, then I'm just gonna end up uh, cutting them like that right there. I have nothing to really cut, so that kind of sucks. Here are my um, rotors right here. Well, I just have one right here. Let me pull it out quick. All right, so there it is right there. I got my pads, just got uh, Duralast Gold, the cheapest ones, Type S, and this one's um, AP1, AP2. Um, yeah, so you could either go with this one or you can go with the TL Type S. I just went with the AP. The APs are a little bit um, smaller here and there is gonna be a little bit of overhang on the on the actual um, pad. It's gonna overhang, but I'm not even worried about that. And uh, these were cheap as hell too. So not that much of a difference as far as like barely a difference, but that beautiful Brembo, it's gonna look nice. So let me um, clean this. I'm gonna blow a little paint right there and the difference is is that this rotor the disc is actually the hat is sunken down the disc is up this one or no the disc is in the hat is in disc is up this one the hats out and the disc is back as you can see that was uh, pretty confusing to say but it's just basically the opposite and uh, it just brings this mating surface closer you couldn't do um tl type s um disc but you'll actually have to space it in between here and space the rotor out and i do not like having a spacer behind the caliper i mean behind the uh rotor between this because there just seems something wrong with the uh the actual hub centric of this mating inside there i don't know why but it works but i just don't like it so but this is also a downside too just due to the fact that the um the pad is going to overhang so yeah all right guys so in order to get this to work i had to bend this back and i bent that back um i'm probably gonna end up just um bending it back and forward until i break it but I don't want to take everything off. So this is just going to have to roll. Um, I try to throw on the caliper and uh, it hit back here. And so basically I had smacked this in right here to give me some space. And it seems much better as long as this is flush with the spindle. It should be good. But now I kind of see why people just uh, rip the whole thing off because uh, you really don't have to deal with it. And it is kind of scary when I had the rotor on. Uh, you test it and you're like, okay, well, I'm screwed. Um, nothing works. But um, luckily, it's just the shield that's giving me problems. But yeah. All right, guys. So just like that, it uh, bolted up. And man, it's such a tight fit with uh, beating this splash guard or uh, yeah, that backing plate this brake plate whatever it is back but uh it all goes in and then um the spacing's nice and no rubbing nothing and that's in there i sh i shot a little bit of uh paint it's just your uh normal vht paint this is like stuff that i want to like try and use and get rid of already but um yeah it's pretty dang good so that's gonna be a nice color combo right there. And uh, well, hopefully, we'll see. So now I'm gonna, um, I have some brake fluid. I'm going to um, take off the brake line, put them here, crack these, I have a hose. And um, I'm just gonna get these like 90% bled out as good as possible until I get a buddy uh, to help me actually bleed them. But that's what sucks. So I'm gonna pull out the pads and um, get the clips, well that main spring 
that keeps them in and those uh, pins and get everything situated. But yeah, probably do that after this and um, torquing down these bolts, but yeah. All right, so those are the pads right there. I know that one has an indicator and the other one doesn't, so. So that one doesn't have an indicator. So these should have it right there. I don't know which one. I'll just put this one in the back. Perfect. Try not to touch it. Oh no, that's too far in right there. I gotta see which way does this go. Okay, so it looks like that's the end right there. So they go in this way. Like that. And then this goes in. Like that. I think so. Unless it goes in this way. No. So yeah, so let me get this in there. I still, yeah, that's the way it goes. So yeah, so it looks pretty good. I'm gonna uh, button this up and I'm gonna get that brake line on. Okay, so I was actually doing it wrong. I got that pin in and then instead of going this way, cause you would think that makes sense the way that looks, it's actually this way. So, once you go like that, you bend it all the way in, and then you slide the pin in. All right, guys, so there it is right there. Pretty dang dope. Um, I'm gonna take off this little thing in the back right there and put the brake line, and that's gonna be pretty much 95% done. All I have to do is just put on the spacer and, um, kind of like bleed the brakes a little bit just make sure it dribbles out a little bit i have a hose i'm gonna do uh they say well i know the audi bmw mercedes say do the outside first because that one's the furthest away from here and then you do this one so that's what i'm gonna do because if you get it here where this is kind of at an angle up there this is the lower point so you're most likely gonna get here with fluid the uh the air bubble is always gonna rise up. So these are gonna have the air bubbles at the top. So once you crack these and you get fluid out, you're gonna have the majority of air out of the system. But yeah. So basically at this point, I got the brake line on, had to clean it up a little bit. I got some brake fluid on the uh, rotor on the fresh paint. It ate it off immediately. So with this one, I'm just gonna do, um, kind of like a gravity bleed. The um, reservoir is up there. This is down here. Gravity, whatever goes up, it flows down. So there's very minor pressure in here just due to gravity. And uh, now I just wait until there's a little fluid in here. I could actually pump the, the brake pedal also, but I'm just gonna do like a little gravity bleed. I have that right there. And then this can go into a can. And uh, yeah, so that's loose right there. So I'm pretty sure that this is filling up right here and I have some brake fluid and I'm just topping off as I go. All right guys, so finally got it bled. It's um, probably about a 95% good. Um, I just gotta wait until a buddy comes to do a proper bleeding. I'm probably just gonna get some um, Honda fluid and start from that one do everything because that fluid was grimy for sure so i kind of want to get that out of the system and uh just do a good flush so yeah just tighten these up and i'm gonna throw on the wheel we'll get a little sneak peek and i'm still waiting on the paint for the lip 
and um, as soon as I get that painted, we'll see how everything looks, but this should look pretty dope. All right, guys, so huge um, issue. There she is right there. Um, I went to go put on the freaking wheel and these 15 millimeter spacers, this caliper is too far out. The wheel hits it. So it's a complete fail, at least maybe for today. I do have some five millimeter spacers, very thin ones that I believe I still think I do have at home. So I'm going to run over there, look for them. If I don't, I'm going to um, just throw on the wheel and it's going to be chilling like this, basically with the jack underneath it until I get 20 or 25 millimeter spacers. Um, and the only reason why it's like this is because obviously the type R wheels are um, 60 offset they're sunken in that's why really nobody likes them but they look damn good so um what i'm gonna end up doing is going there getting um the, the spacers if i do have them and yeah and then who knows like down the road i'm just gonna ditch these wheels and get some nice um 35 38 offset something a little bit more aggressive so i don't have to run all of these spacers but i gotta do what i gotta do and i chip the paint right there that sucks so that's gonna be um the little video and yeah i can't wait to uh paint the lip get everything nice and uh you guys will see it come together but yeah so guys if you want to see more uh please subscribe and comment let me know what you think and this is a huge failure but it is what it is and this is the name of the game when you're um putting stuff from other makes and models onto your car but yeah we're not uh, make but another model but yeah guys i'll see ya peace all right guys so that was a false ending right there here's a car right here so i have these spacers right here and um yeah these are five mil i believe so kind of looks like it and uh i've been having these for a long time ever since i got the car they were just too uh wimpy so i never used them so they're hub centric so that's kind of good so let's see if i could finally um throw the wheel on until i get a larger spacer so if this works i'm just gonna go for a 20 mil spacer all the way around and um that'll make the back look more flush too which is um always good but man this is such a headache and um i chipped it so it sucks let's uh check it out all right guys so i got the spacer in there and i already tried it but i want to do it for the camera that's if i could hold it right there well i can't really hold it but i'll get right there it clears all right guys so there you have it it is on there um i just used the impact and that's gonna buy me some time I don't even know if I could drive it like this, but I'll see. There's at least three or four millimeter. I could drive it, but yeah, that's pretty sketchy though. And especially that spacer too. Um, I'm just gonna end up getting some 25 mil or 20. When I set it on the ground, if I like 20, I'm gonna uh, rock 20. If I want that extra five, then I'll just get the 25. Cause right here, this is 15 plus five, so. But five more millimeter would actually look pretty dang nice, but we just gotta see. So now, oh shit, my impact. So what's actually kind of cool is that now that I did that right there, I know exactly what to do here. And uh, everything that I need as far as tools are in this bag right here. So I gathered up everything that I needed and it's all here. So I don't have to go through the toolbox or I don't have to, you know, look for stuff. It's just there. But um, yeah, that's dope.